There are a number of ways that you can get and or receive a burn when you're in the wilderness, when you're out camping, when you're out enjoying yourself in nature. And although there's a lot of different things uh, that can happen, typically what does happen is it's something that involves you around your campfire, either cooking or boiling water, uh, making char uh, material for your next fire. What'll happen is, you know, just not thinking and just a quick lapse of judgment, you grab the water bottle out of the fire, burn your hand, uh, or, you know, probably more commonly, scalds happen. So you were careful taking it out, but the water was still hot and you spilled it on yourself and you got a scald burn. It's probably even more common. Uh, so burns to the palms of the hand and on the legs or your chest, wherever you end up spilling, getting that scald wound is, is probably a lot more common than some of the more, uh, the more kind of larger surface area burns. Um, but with that, you know, we all learn about first degree, second degree, third degree burns, you know, first degree being a uh, kind of a superficial burn, kind of like a sunburn. Uh, there's no blistering involved that doesn't compromise the integrity of the skin all that much, but it's, it's a burn, it hurts. Uh, and then you get into like the partial thickness burns where you start really, you know, compromising that top layer of skin and then third degree being a full thickness burn where it really gets down past that first layer of skin. Sometimes you start uh, getting uh, some injury to the underlying tissues and then you get into more of the fourth degree when you've gone all the way through the skin and started to compromise things like the muscle tissue and even the bone down to that point. And you know, while all that is, is good you know, to understand, more importantly what you need to understand is total body surface area. Because regardless of what type of burn you have, except when we're talking about first degree, but anything past that superficial burn, we're gonna treat the same way based on the total body surface area that is born that is actually burned uh, that's the only difference so when we're talking about total body body surface area there is a thing called the rule of nines right so you break every portion of the body down basically in multiples of nine so the head and neck are nine percent each arm is another nine percent so nine percent nine percent the upper leg is another nine percent of course times two lower leg is nine percent times two then the chest and basically the front portion of your torso is 18% and the back portion of your torso is another 18%. So all of that is 99%. The other 1% is the perineum area, which is your groin. Um, so that is a kind of a, a template, a system that you use to determine what the total body surface area is that's burned. And this only includes second degree and worse. Uh, first degree burns don't factor into that equation. Another technique that you can use is just using the palm of the person's hand. The palm of the person's hand equals about 1%. So you can use that to estimate total body surface area burned if you know that that is 1%. Now why is that important? Well, the first steps to taking care of a burn, obviously it should go without saying you remove the source of the burn. Uh, that should be first, of course. The next thing you want to do is cool that burn off. You can apply cold water. You can use a specialized burn dressing that has a cooling effect to it. And then what you have to understand is burns, no matter what size they are, are highly susceptible to infection. So you want to clean that before you cover the wound with a dressing. So you can use the cleanest water you have available. If you have to take a little bit of time to disinfect some water, so that you're not putting a lot of germs into that wound, then you should do so. Uh, if you're not carrying a small bar of soap in your med kit, you might wanna think about that, but most people have that in their hygiene kit for whatever they were going out for anyway. But cleaning that off with soap and water to really kind of prevent that infection as best you can is a great idea. Then you're gonna cover the wound with a dressing to keep it clean. Now. This is where your total body surface area comes in. If it's 10% or less, it's considered a small surface area burn. So for a small surface area burn, we wanna use a wet dressing because that wet dressing has that nice cooling effect. It's gonna be a lot more comfortable and it's, 
it's kind of what you want to put. And typically that's what we're gonna run into is a smaller surface area burn out in the wilderness. Uh, for those larger surface area burns, those you know greater than 10%, you want to use a dry dressing and the reason why is the, the skin you know your integumentary system part of its function is to help regulate your core body temperature when that's compromised not only is it opened up now to infection but you also have lost that ability your natural ability to thermoregulate in that area so a burn victim that has a large surface area burn aside from the infection they're really susceptible to hypothermia so for a larger surface area burn, we use dry dressings. You can still cool it off, but when you actually cover it with a dressing, you want to cover it with a dry dressing. What you don't want to do is place a large surface area wet dressing on there. So on top of the compromised uh, system that they already have for core body, uh, body core temperature control, you've now introduced a wet environment that's susceptible to evaporative cooling, uh, susceptible to conduction. There's a lot of things that you've added and you've increased the risk of hypothermia. So wet dressing on the small surface area, 10% or less. Dry dressings on the large surface area that's greater than 10%. So you can use, for your cooling, you can use just clean water and just to irrigate that. And then you're gonna wash it anyway with soap and water no matter what. Uh, so. If you're trying to, if you don't have any special burn dressings, you can take a simple piece of gauze and create a wet dressing for those smaller surface area burns. Just by putting some water on that dressing and then using that on the burn. Right, so you place that directly over the burn and then cover that with a dressing. And you want obviously the cleanest water possible and you want the dressings to be as clean as possible. So that's gonna have a nice cooling effect and it's gonna feel a lot better than a dry, kind of scratchy dressing uh, on those raw nerve endings that are now exposed from the burn. So wet dressing. Uh, what you can also do, what I like to carry is some specialized burn dressings. This is a burn tech dressing. So this is a gel, it's like a hydro gel. It's a really wet gel that's uh, sterile, that's specially formulated for burns. This is a four by four piece and they come in all different sizes but four by four is typically what I'm seeing out in the wilderness and this will cover approximately one to two percent total body surface area so small surface area burn so to keep it clean wearing a pair of gloves is a great idea you can pull those out they come in a little tray and then they have some cloth strips on that tray Use those cloth strips to keep this portion as clean as possible. And you kind of take that part off. Lay that directly on the wound. Come out of there. There we go. I'll take it out this way. As long as you don't touch that gel dressing, you're gonna be all right. Place that directly on the wound has a nice cooling effect and you can use a dry sterile burn dressing this is a cravat but it's actually a sterile cravat so depending on where your injury is you'll want to use that I just want to cover that to kind of protect that wound as best I can I think the wind is affecting our sterility a little. And the hard part becomes, can you tie in? Have you practiced your knots one-handed? So this will keep a lot of the dirt and the germs out of this and you're going to want to change this dressing no matter what whether it's a dry dressing or a wet dressing you're going to want to change this every 24 hours so if you have a limited supply of those burn dressings that have that nice cooling effect you'll want to use that first but then after that you'll probably switch to something like uh, you know whatever you have cotton material that's been uh, disinfected uh, is a great thing to use but 
this is definitely an emergency you want to take care of. This isn't something you want to put off if you're going to the field for an extended period of time and you get burned early on. Don't stay out in the woods and think that, you know, this is going to get better because it, the, there's a really, really high chance that this is going to get, be infected within the first few days. So this is an emergency that you want to go ahead and take care of. The Florida man was pecked to death by trying to express the anal glands of a pair of sandhill cranes this evening.